How much is enough? Well, I'm gonna let you guys be the judge. Stick around and we'll get right to it. So roughly a year ago, I upgraded the backup battery in my shack from 35 amp hours to 100 amp hours using lithium iron phosphate uh, because I was just a little bit concerned that that 35 amp hour wouldn't cut it. Now, at the time, I had never considered a possible power outage lasting more than a few days. So I assumed when I put that 100 amp hour battery in there, that would be plenty. Now, in light of recent events, I'm absolutely rethinking all of my backup power strategies, both for radio and for the house itself, because I seriously doubt that anyone had major flooding on their bingo card for Western North Carolina or Eastern Tennessee. No one imagined that a hurricane would come that far inland and create that much havoc in that area. At least I would have never guessed that. Now I've always encouraged you guys to kind of prepare for what's most likely to happen in your area. And I think that's still sound advice. But looking at uh, what's going on over on the east side of the state and the western side of North Carolina, I've really started reconsidering uh, a lot of my decisions. And I want to bulk up and go with a more layered approach to my backup power strategy. Now, I'm going with a 200 amp hour Redodo battery. You're definitely not going to be lugging that thing around in a backpack. It comes in at just over 41 pounds, but for a battery that's going to sit underneath my shack desk and just be there in case of a power outage, this is going to work out absolutely perfectly. So the battery is just over 20 inches in this direction. It is just shy of eight inches, maybe just over eight inches, count this extra little lip right here in this direction. And it is, what is that, about eight and a half inches tall. So it is a fairly big boy. Now I have run a discharge test on this and that was good. It comes with a 100 amp BMS. Now the only thing it's lacking that I did not see indicated on Redodo's website is it does not have cold temperature charge protection. So I wouldn't want to use this outside, but for my use case, in the house, this is going to be absolutely perfect and I don't have to worry about that cold temperature protection. All of the other protections are built into the BMS. Now, I mentioned a layer approach. So this big boy is going to be my primary backup battery for the shack. I do have to rethink a few things in the shack and probably rewire a few things. I want to eliminate several things in my shack from working on the backup battery system. I only want those mission critical items to be running from the backup battery. Things like uh, external monitors and a couple of uh, extra Raspberry Pi displays that I've got for weather and for ham clock, those don't need to run on the backup battery system. Those, uh, if the power goes out, the internet's gonna be down. I don't care if those things go dark. But my other equipment, my critical equipment, like the APRS Digipeter and my primary HF station, along with my primary two meter 440 station, I want to be uh, powered by that backup battery system. Now, in the event that it is a really long power outage and this thing is run completely dead, that's where I'm gonna fall back to the other battery box that you guys probably saw me build just a couple of videos back uh, with this particular box here. So the plan will be run this one until it's, well, if not dead, run it down close. Then I can pull this out, put it on some solar panels out in the sun while the station is powered by this box here. This is another 100 amp hour battery. So that would give me a total of 300 amps of power as backup power to my shack. Now this one is obviously meant also to go portable, so this one will allow me to do double duty with this particular box. I can use it while I'm portable, but it will also serve as the backup to this battery should it ever be needed. I also picked up a new 20 amp 
lithium iron phosphate charger that will charge this battery uh, probably in about 10 hours. So that takes it a little bit of time. I could also charge this with a 40 amp charger, but charging it a little bit slower than that is going to be better for the battery in the long term. Now, in case you're wondering, the way I've got this set up in the shack is I've got the battery connected to a West Mountain Radio Epic Power Gate. That power gate has three different uh, connection points on it. One of them is to your power supply, the other one is to your battery, and the third one is the out, which I've got fed into a Anderson uh, rig runner, uh, wait a minute, it's West Mountain Radio rig runner, which gives me the Anderson power pole outputs that are all fused. So the nice thing about having that epic power gate is it will keep the battery uh, on a full charge as it just sits there. Now those epic power gates are programmable for several different chemistries of battery, lithium iron phosphate being one of them. So it just keeps the battery, make sure that it stays full under normal conditions. As soon as commercial power is lost, it automatically flips to the backup battery. And I have found that's quick enough that a Raspberry Pi will not even reboot due to that power flipping over. I don't know exactly what the milliseconds is that it takes to flip that switch inside that uh, power gate, but I do know that it's quick enough that my Raspberry Pis don't reboot. So I am pleased with this. Uh, like I said, the discharge test that I did pulled just over the 200 amps, so it uh, definitely passed that test. This is going to be a great addition. Is it going to be enough though, if we were down for weeks or maybe a month without power? I can run all of the tests that I want to and take all of the guesses that I want to, but it's really going to be hard to say until you're in the middle of that and know exactly how much you're going to be using the radio during that period. If you're able to use it sparingly, these, this, this single one right here will be plenty. If you're using it moderately, then this one and this one should handle it. However, under really heavy use, I don't know that even 300 amps is enough. But I'm going to assume if we kept the power dial back as far as possible, this should get me through any type of storm. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3. seriously low.